my Soka universe back in the other car. Well, I'm gonna tell you about what I saw yesterday with my personal view of things and then you know tonight I'm gonna shoot the big roundup to the leaks there where we can look at all the results and implications and so on but you know a little bit I can give you now too. Um, first off before I forget again um, it did not enter my, <laughs> uh, how to say, my mind that much because I was so far fixed on the Barcelona derby and the um, Sampdoria Milan game that I barely checked the Bundesliga results and yeah we have a change at the top of the table because Bayern only manages a 1-1 in Freiburg uh, another 1-1 in Freiburg uh, in Munich Freiburg had a very late uh, equalizer and now Yesterday, uh, on Saturday, they got a very early goal that Bayern actually equalized, I think, by the 20, 20 but they couldn't find the breakthrough. And Dortmund won, so Dortmund is now clear at the table, uh, two points clear. However, the big clash is coming, I think, this week. Could probably be the championship decider, probably. It could be, uh, unless someone falters. So, yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see uh, where this one is going. This was kinda unexpected, I have to be honest. But let's get to yesterday's games. Uh, actually, I started out with uh, the Derby della Sole. It was actually bound to be an Italian day and then it didn't quite turn out that way. Uh, Derby della Sole between uh, Roma and Napoli, um, kind of a really important game for Roma in the sense that Milan had lost. Um, you had either Inter or Lazio uh, dropping points for sure because they were playing each other in the evening. So uh, with with a win you can get somewhere. Nah. Did not quite work out. Napoli took a very early lead or, or in the second minute and a wonderfully taken goal by Milik. How he uh, the deep the pass through by Verdi, then he stops it with one foot and slams it in, into the short corner with the other. Absolutely gorgeous, uh, brilliant goal, I gotta say. Really, really brilliant goal. Uh, that's the type that you want to see. It's not the, the scrappy goal that we saw uh, Sampdoria Milan. And I was already afraid, okay, this is another game where an early goal is kind of deciding it. Uh, was fortunate not that way, although Roma really did not look, look well uh, the whole time. Uh, in the first half hour or, or so, Napoli had a huge chance where Olsen uh, saved. Probably would have been ruled out for offside. They had another one. Um, I think there, there was another, another goal that was taken away for offside, which just by a hair. Uh, and this is where I, th I think we need to, this now that we have the VAR technology, Offside needs to be um, really uh, defined better. For me, honestly, I would not look at any body part. I would really look at the torso. Uh, is the torso um, ahead of the ball or not? Because all, uh, this was only offside because there was the foot was offside. And I'm sorry. The smell has said that this, the, the, if you show me this picture without the line, I'm saying there's no offside. But okay, they're calibrating now to the finest and in Italy they're taking it very uh, tight. I honestly think, uh, if you, yeah, offside for me should, should be if there's no overlap any, anymore. I think this should not, should still not be offside, but let's face Well, Napoli dominated, Roma had a chance to throw in Zonzi, but it really seemed like it's gonna go 1 0 in the break, and then uh, a penalty is given. There were actually two fouls there, so a penalty was kind of just, just when Perotti makes it 1 1 at the half, and you think, yeah, maybe Roma can get back. Nope. Right at the end of the half, uh, right at the beginning of the second half, it almost starts the same way. Napoli dominating, and it's Mertens who gets the 2 1 after Olsen didn't look all that well. Um, there was a through ball, uh, you know, kind of parallel to all to the goal, and then I actually think he has to have. And then Mertens is free. Uh, Verdi, five minutes later, it was the 50th, in the 55th, Verdi makes it 
three one and it's four one at the end and yeah napoli looked strong and roma is in trouble and i still think they never should have fired di francesco uh, you gotta see it through then i was actually gearing up more or less for the liverpool tottenham game uh, but then i saw there's actually psv uh, at ajax and that's a big title decider because PSV was five points clear of Ajax, so it was basically a last chance for Ajax. And that immediately took over for me, kind of the status of that's probably uh, one of the biggest games this weekend. The other one was, of course, the old firm where Celtic beat Rangers, but I didn't see, I saw the highlights today, but you know, not much. Um, that game was quite intense and interesting. Uh, Ajax took an early lead through an own goal. I mean, they had a, a chance before, but you know, it was not, uh, Ajax never was really dominant. Uh, you could see that those are two level teams. Um, the own goal was really miscalculation became between the defender and the goalkeeper. Didn't look good. I mean, the defender has no business going there uh, if the goalkeeper would have gotten it. So, yeah didn't look well. PSV then needed to come, but I always thought the PSV looks um, well, um, you know, playing the game, but never really having big chances. And it, it, it actually, with some luck, Ajax could have had a lead uh, that's bigger at the half. That was not to be. Uh, second half, the big first thing is the uh, red card for Ajax. A really stupid foul. I mean, a very high foot. It was first a yellow card. VAR decides it's a red. Um, and just a minute later, PSV uh, equalizes. I think it was De Jong. Uh, but Onana, the Ajax goalkeeper, he is such a mixed bag. He's either really good or really bad. Uh, I mean, he always has, has has a mistake in him, and he flies past the ball and yeah. It's 1-1 and at that point it all pointed towards PSV. Until Neres gets into the box and again by the same defender, I think, a German defender, Weber, whatever. I don't think it was Weber, but who's Schultz? Uh, typically German, German name. He tries to make the tackle, misses the ball and through Neres making a kind of a spin move away from him, just touches him. The referee said initial play on and then VAR said, look, look at it, and he gives the penalty, the Tadic slots home. And then even with a man less, Ajax kind of comfortably defended that one and got the win in the third, in, in, in the 96th minute when Neres makes it 3-1. And now it's only two points on top of the table. And it's gonna be interesting how that one goes. Both teams have, I mean, the Dutch league is not very, uh, you know, tight over, uh, you know, um, there is a clear draw, draw, drop off after PSV and Ajax, but yeah, they are dropping points here and there. So it's gonna be interesting how that plays out. I still think that PSV probably has the slightly better chance. I um, mean, the two points are two points, but you know, with just a draw, it can go the other way. Then Liverpool Tottenham, was also an intense game uh, that since it was then in the afternoon when the kids came home I actually saw much less than I intended to but I saw the 1-0 through Firmino. Uh, Tottenham actually started star, star, star well but Liverpool made the goal and then actually it was Liverpool who really uh, was in charge of the game. Uh, didn't see much because of the PSV Ajax game almost at the same time. Uh, didn't see much then from too much from the second half. I, the, when I flipped over, there was a, a chance by Alexander Arnold, but the, uh, but then um, Tottenham equalized, which at the time was uh, according to the commentator. When I saw the highlights, was probably just judge justified the rose. Which it, it, it was really hard, hard to find. It was a free kick from Kane deep uh, that got uh, pulled in with a nice move. Uh, and Rose can then uh, slot it home. The free kick was a, a little bit contentious because the ball was not still, but you know, there's no bar and whatsoever. 
and so it was 1-1 one, one, and you could see the faces in, in the crowd because you need this win. If you drop another one, you are even with a game uh, more, you're behind uh, City. So that was kind of do or die and Liverpool really uh, tried to get the winner, really tried hard to get that winner. But in the end, uh, it seems like it's going to end 1-1. One, one. And then uh, ball in. Salah heads it towards the goal, was not a really strong header, but Yoris cannot handle it, has it, uh, lets it go, it falls to Alderweireld's um, feet and it rolls in and it's 2-1 for Liverpool, celebrations, 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 they had to hang on for a few more minutes, but in the end they get their win, I think it was overall deserved and it keeps um, the championship open, so that's a nice thing uh, to say and you know I'm wearing Liverpool today I'm still hoping that they will make it all the way but I think City looks a little bit stronger and then what's the then in the evening I didn't see too much but I listened to Lazio got a win at Inter and it's one of those where I was really really hoping that this ends in, in a draw or maybe even slightly more for an Inter win Although when Lazio scored the goal, I was, yeah, and then I thought about, oh, table, no, 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 no. Uh, because if Lazio wins at Milan, then direct duel goes to Lazio and Lazio has the fourth uh, spot tiebreaker if it would come to that. So not entirely happy, but from what I heard and saw, Inter was dreadful, absolutely dreadful. And they were wearing also their horrible uh, mashup jerseys. The best thing about those are the numbers. I hope they will retire them now and go back to their regular jerseys because I really don't like those mashup jerseys. But yeah, there it ends uh, in Austria. Lask had a great start to the uh, championship round of where only the top six play each other. Um, but Salzburg is had even a better start. And the interesting part, it's now going to be a really big week for Lask. First cup semi-final against Rapid, where they're actually favored at home. And then uh, you play Saturday, uh, Sunday, you play Salzburg, uh, which is first against second, four points difference. If Lask wins that one, we may, we may have a chance. I personally am still very, very doubtful in that. It's mostly down to the way that the championship is set up that after the main round points are halved and now ask as a chance but okay to win it it would be great well that's it from my weekend i will do a big video uh the monday night games will probably not fit in there quite yet uh but i will put them you know in the editing i will show you the results uh to get the fuller picture it's mainly arsenal and newcastle i think that's the big monday night game and it only has implications on uh who will be fourth uh, between Manchester United who also won if Arsenal wins against Newcastle they are fourth spot so kind of easy let me know what you watched would you agree with my assessments if you watched the games that I watched uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day